now by our sports director, Jim Hill, who has so much in the way of stories about Kobe Bryant and you knew him personally. And mm. we just want to extend our condolences to you and just to the entire Lakers family. I mean, I'm sure you were shocked to hear this this morning. This is, um, this is more than sad, yeah. if you know what I mean. Uh, when you have someone who is, and I say he is because he, he right. still lives in, in all of Absolutely. us, who was so young, so gifted, uh, so wonderful, such a, he was, we all know he's a great basketball player, but he was a better father, husband, and family man. Uh, he did so much in our community that a lot of people really don't know about. Mm -hmm. We know about the, some of the things that he, that he did. But there are stories that I know of, of where he has helped personally to help young kids go to school, mm -hmm. gave them money to go to school. And I'm not just talking about junior high or high school, I'm talking about college and things like that. He, he made the adjustment to retirement better than anyone I've ever met. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he, was, he, was, he was, you know, you always hear about athletes who, when they retire, they don't know what to do. Right, might be lost. Or, they get yep. lost, yep. they're sick, the money is stolen, yep. uh, they get into all kinds of trouble and things like that. Not him, he was, he was preparing his entire athletic life for when he was going to retire. Mm -hmm. And when he retired, he knew exactly what he was going to do. There was no guessing or anything about it. I, one of the things, he became a, um, an author, and one of the books is Legacy, and the Queen, and I went down and did, and did an interview with him uh -huh. when he talked about that. And one of the things that it stuck out in my mind when I first looked at it, and I opened it up, and it says here, Tanani, Gigi, Bibi, and Coco, my four beautiful, spirited, strong daughters. Here's the part. When you fiercely protect your passion, no one can steal your dreams. Kobe Bryant. He Isn't that really him in a nutshell? He had so much that he planned ahead. You mentioned, you know, so many players go and hit the golf course and they mm -hmm. retire. But mm -hmm. he had a plan not only for when he was 18 years old to play in the NBA, but a plan for after the NBA. And sure. he succeeded at both. Sure. And, and the other thing is, we, we all had our, our ups and downs. You're showing a tape right here of the, when I saw him at LAFC. That's the, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's the last time. No, that is the last time I did an interview with him. Mm -hmm. And that may have been the last time anyone did an interview with him. And we were talking about, I asked him about going into the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And in typical Kobe Bryant fashion, no, nah, that's okay. I don't. I'm not really concerned. Let's just, I'll worry about that when it's time to. Mm -hmm. he, he always deflected personal, individual gain and notoriety. He always tried to put it off to the side because he knew that's not what it was all about. What it was all about is by giving back and helping our young people. And we talk about, about giving back. You know, we just celebrated Dr. King's uh, birthday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I was driving in, I was thinking, that was a thing, that was a statement that Dr. King said that that maybe, maybe it applies to Kobe today and, and what he was trying to do, and that is giving back to your fellow mankind is one of the most noble things that anyone can do. Mm -hmm. And what could be more noble than helping our young people and to make sure that they don't make the mistakes that we have made? Mm -hmm. And that's what Kobe does. That's what, that's what he did. You know, that's what uh, LeBron does. That's what Magic does. That's what a lot of it. But when you think about being at the forefront of all of those mm -hmm. things, Kobe Breen Bryant. And I remember the night of his retirement at Staples Center. <gasps> what a game. Oh, he, ju he just got off on that game and stuff like that. Yeah. And when he came back out with the towel wrapped around his, uh, his shoulders, and the last thing he said was, you know, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Mamba out. Yeah, Mamba out. Because he was ready for his next chapter. That was it. Yeah. That was it, and he... I, it's hard to, you know, it, you have an interesting perspective. We talk about this on the set all the time. Yeah, we talk yeah. about, you know, people that you've met and yeah. people who you really admire, um, you know, just dealing with them in your professional career. And, you know, for me, Kobe and just the Lakers glory days, mm -hmm. that was so personal. That, that Those were memories, you know, with family that, that, you know, people in L.A. will always have. Yeah. And he's so closely attached to those times. And I wonder, I think perhaps maybe you think, is that why this just feels so personal? It is because he gave it his all whenever he was on the floor. He was a Laker. He knew what it meant to be a Laker. 
We all have had our ups and downs and our trials and tribulations. He's gotten through all of those and, and has come out on the other end a better man for that. But, you know, we teach our, our young people about, well, we try to teach them mm -hmm. about being strong, about adversity, about overcoming obstacles, about how to become a better young man. Uh, and, in this, and, in this, and in this particular instance, how to become a better young um, African-American male. Mm -hmm. And because you have your, we have our responsibility to our young people and to all young people to show them that how to do things right. I remember in this, in this interview right here, we were, uh, I took my little nephew down to see him. Who you love, your, that's your little buddy. That's my, that's my little buddy, yeah. <laughs> That's that's my, my that, that's my buddy, um, and he's got a he's he's, he's got such a such a great uh, nickname. And so we were, I took him down, and we were going over to see him. Mm -hmm. And Kobe looked at him and said, "Hey, buddy!" <laughs> and my nephew thought he really knew him because he said, <laughs> right. "You know, hey, sure. you know, hey, buddy." So uh, he made you feel like you were the most important person in the world because when he talked to you, he was looking right at you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think all these other people there around, but he's looking right at you. And when he was talking to my nephew, Legend Lee, he looked right at him, and Legend looked right at him again. And, it was, and I'm sitting there saying, oh, this is really cool. I said, I'm not involved. He said, nope, not this time. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and those kinds of things. So he had this unique ability of being able to talk to the masses but make them think that he was talking to each one individually. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, it's a bad day. It is. You know, you talk